Welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. So as we were discussing in the A111 basics, this VCO right here has actually two types of FM exponential that's found at these two CV inputs and then linear FM. Uh, our first demo is going to actually cover exponential FM. So we'll talk a little bit about how that works and then kind of jump in with a few demos. Um, now, as you're receiving inputs here at CV1 or CV2, you're going to be getting proportional changes in the pitch relationship with the VCO here. Now, if you're inputting a low frequency CV, uh, you'll get vibrato. So let's hear that. So I'm going to grab my LFO from over here, just taking a sine wave and I'm gonna patch it into my LFO, or sorry, my VCO. There we go. And now let's hear that. So I'm gonna take a simple sine wave out and I'm just gonna patch it right into the filter over here. And I chose uh, the A120 since it's not really too colored. I have no uh, resonance going on. So this should be just straight sound. bring the CV input down. So that's our standard VCO sound right there. And then as I bring in a low frequency signal, we get that kind of vibrato sound that we all know and love. Okay. So that's one example of a low frequency CV that uh, is gonna be changing proportionately the in-pitch relationship. Um, now, another time that you want that to work for you uh, is when you're using a sequencer. So like we have over here, our A154. I already arranged some notes to be coming out of this and they're patched into the quantizer here. So I'm just gonna be taking those quantized notes right there and I'm gonna patch them into the CV input. And so because of the type of input it is, that's what's allowing those pitches to make sense. It has a volt per octave response. And in a situation like this, that's what you want. Now in some other instances, you may not want to patch low frequency signals into this. You might want to try uh, some experiments maybe with some audio rate signals. And as this happens, as you're patching in audio at the exponential inputs here, it's going to be creating sidebands, which are going to make your final sound output much more complex. So let's try this out with a simple sine wave as our carrier, which is what we got already. And then we're going to use another sine wave from our A110 over here as our modulating VCO. So we're going to take this out right there, and we're just going to patch it. Let's do it into CV2. Okay, so we don't hear it yet, but let me bring it up. sound very different from what we had before since originally we were just starting with a sine wave with just one frequency and now we have a much more complex sound right there we bring the CV input all the way up we get a very harsh kind of inharmonic tone coming out of our carrier oscillator So, if I change the octave of our modulation VCO, let's do this a couple times. So I'm set at the, the zero range on my modulation VCO. Let me go up one octave, or sorry, down one octave first. And then let's go back up to the zero. Let's go up. Let me just do that a few times.
So now, depending on your choice of, let me turn that all the way down. Depending on your choice of waveforms and modulation amount, uh, you'll get various timbres, everything from buzzes to noises to kind of very harsh, heavy bell-like tones. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to create kind of an inharmonic sound uh, because of the response being uh, full per octave. So as it's moving through those, you're getting all these weird uh, sort of sidebands that in some cases are ideal, but in other cases you may not want to use that way. Um, you may want something a little more uh, focused and easy to hear all the individual tones. Um, so let's actually combine the two things that we were doing here. So I'm going to take the CVs, the notes that we were using before, and patch those right in there. So there's our pitches. And now let's bring in some audio rate modulation. to kind of hear what kind of effects we can get. So I can bring this up a little bit more. Now, if I wanted to vary this patch, I could choose a different uh, modulation waveform coming in. So let's try a triangle wave. Let's try a different waveform. Let's try the rectangle or pulse wave. So patch that. Let's try the saw wave going into our sine wave over here. Okay, so let me go ahead and unpatch that. So hopefully this gave you a little taste as to what can be accomplished with exponential FM, uh, whether you're using it in the low frequency range uh, for CV notes uh, or for vibrato. Uh, I didn't want to go through too many different permutations. I wanted to kind of keep this you know, under 10 minutes and just kind of give you a little taste of what exponential FM can do and the types of sounds that it can create for you. So that way, as we go into the next video in this series on linear FM, you'll be able to watch the two sort of side by side if you want to uh, and kind of compare the types of sounds that we created in the exponential FM video to the ones we're going to create in the next video, linear FM. So stay tuned for that and uh, keep on patching out there.